This is my son. Well, let's start from the top. Doesn't it seem? But you didn't get pause so I could say hi. 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 Welcome to our first show. Thank you. Welcome to you as well. Thank you. I feel like um, we should tell people who we are. Well, is it really our first show? Because we did have some episodes a while ago. There's some stuff out there. We've tried this. We've done this uh, without any cameras on for many years. Oh, yeah. I like that. This Anonymity. is our- this is a show that we're excited about. We're new to Righteous Media. We're new to our location, which we should, we should talk about. Uh, so forget like number one, but welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. <laughs> nice. So some people know who we are. Most people don't. And also, I presume many people don't care. So let's give them a reason. Uh, I'm Rick. I'm Sharon. Uh, you maybe clicked on this because you know us. You clicked on this because you saw an ad. You clicked on this because Paul Rykoff told you so. However you're here, we appreciate you and are, are very excited about this. We are coming to you live from a secret desert location where we are quarantining, uh, self-quarantining out of precaution together. Uh, and this is uh, quite a specific experience, not one that I think that we would have necessarily designed. Well, Never would have guessed this would happen. But we're making uh, a wonderful go of it, and I should say it's you and your husband, my stepfather, and me and my girlfriend, and the four of us are cohabitating with uh, Zephyr the cat, who will come up again and again. Uh, and we're doing a, a really good job of cohabitating from this undisclosed location while we wait for things to uh, just settle down a little bit. And we've been here... It was in September that we got out of Dodge, Dodge being the great city of Los Angeles, California, uh, due to, you know, not not being sure what was coming next between uh, civil unrest and election stuff and pandemic stuff. And uh, I don't know about you. I miss my life in Los Angeles very much. I'm homesick, even though it's home here. I'm also homesick at the same time. Yeah, I miss my friends and my routine, and and it's the it's the schism of like uh, those things not really existing in the same ways anyway. So it's not like I'm just missing them; they don't they're not there. Uh, And we have built this space, which we will give you a tour of at some point soon, uh, where we can come and just um, do our thing and have our chats. And this is really the the culmination of a lot a lot of years of having um, experience of me as your son and you as my mom and some very weird cities and some weirder people and some weirder circumstances still and this shows an opportunity in my eyes for us to just give a glimpse into our relationship uh in a way that i think is is entertaining and mostly just letting people know that um no one has the answer there's no one no one's in charge there are no rules and if uh for once a week or whenever you feel like it you can tune out of whatever it is that is weighing you and come check out what we're doing then that that's a nice way to feel connected i like that that's a nice introduction thank you yeah and um they'll they'll get to to know us and some of the things that that we like to explore and and uh how we see how how we see the world our point of view yeah we're in the desert and there's a specific view uh, that i've never ever seen before and that is of beautiful well, I have encountered a couple roadrunners, <laughs> like real, like real roadrunners. That's a real, they're real. <laughs> they <laughs> do say meep meep. They are constantly being chased by coyotes, some of which are wily. Uh, no, the view is of, uh, of mountains with palm, so palm trees, then mountains. And then behind those mountains in the way distance is a snow capped mountain. So it's like palm trees and snow peak in the same view. And, uh, it's cool. <laughs> it's kind of like right now, right? It's, it's like, delightful. It's everything all at once. The show on the sky changes constantly. <laughs> and the colors, it's really nice. Yeah, we basically watch the office, the sky, and the cat. That's like the entertainment around here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have um, 
been taking this opportunity to cook for everyone as a way to up my cooking game and have found a real passion and like release in the in the artistic process of food there's like this making sure we all eat and are nourished then there's making sure it's healthy and intentional and then there's the stuff that we're into now which is like let's put it this way i recently got <laughs> small tongs with which to plate and do presentation for things like microgreens and little squeeze bottles of sauces we're like at a different we're you're at a different, at a diff- you're at a different <laughs> level now all plant-based uh and working on a, a cookbook as well so stay stay tuned for that cookbooks number one book category is cookbooks yeah it has been for about 100 years interesting yeah so um uh, all plant-based except for what we bring in and and either cook or ask you to cook so the other day we had um we had you didn't we had joe and i had burgers um and then I had some extras that weren't cooked and wrapped mm-hmm. them pretty well and put them in the fridge. And it was mentioned that th- the smell was leaking out. So I, I took the plate out and I, I put the uncooked burgers down the, the garbage disposal. And then I cleaned out the entire, the entire um, refrigerator. What do you mean? You took everything and out? And then I took the refrigerator outside and I hosed it down. <laughs> Did you really take things out of the refrigerator? No. no. And I hosed <laughs> it down. And then I brought, I took the plate and I scrubbed it and I put boiling water on it and then I threw it out. I, don't, I think you're making all that up. <laughs> I I, am. All I know is that it was. <laughs> I am. Like, we're not offended by things. There's, well, there's, there's two directions. One is, is food health safety. <laughs> it's a real thing. So, raw meat in a, in a, in a, in saran wrap it's only good for so long uh the other is like it's this gorgeous plant-based refrigerator it's full of you know it's dark leafy greens and diet cheese and i've got you know mushroom soaking and homemade vegetable broth and then there's just four burgers like raw meat and all i said was um maybe somebody wants to like wrap those a little tighter because they're just like out in the open. Yeah, and okay, every, every. sorry about that. <laughs> I, I shouldn't I, have saved it. There was no way I was going to eat another burger. Well, that's the other thing. I you mean, I won't, eat, I won't do that again probably for a year. It was good. I enjoyed you, it. But you two don't do leftovers, really, very much. It was funny that there was that many burgers. <laughs> like, And, I'll, you know, for, so there's some time, you'll do separate. Yeah, I should have known. You'll do separate uh, meals sometimes, but also, like you mentioned, I'll cook salmon or, or filet or something for you all, yes. which is a really fun challenge to be able to... Um, make that without without tasting it without knowing and <laughs> not to smell it trying not to inhale the the fragrance you know i'm not i'm not into animal uh food animals as food but i'm not i'm not mortified at the concept of it like it's it's i'm not preaching either it's just these are my choices but as a chef i it's a challenge it's like a different ingredient or something so in that challenge it might have a smell to it um a girlfriend doesn't want to do the dishes for things that have touched like fish plates and stuff, which I can respect. You mm-hmm. know, some people have other smells outdoors that um, irritate my nose, but what do you mean? I think I think we're doing well, um, getting along. All right, <laughs> welcome to a new segment that I just invented right now. It's called "Let's Unpack That." <laughs> And then, uh, wait, 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 here's the, here's the bumper I'm going to create later for. Let's unpack that. Let's unpack that. <laughs> All right. So smells outdoors that some people. What is that? What does it, that it, mean? It's okay. It's um. I'm, I'm just I'm just playing around because we're talking about you know fragrances. We're cohabitating. It's a it's we're lucky enough to have a lot of space in our own space but we do share a kitchen and a, and a main room and in that cohabitation we've gotten very accustomed to our independent schedules and, and habits um, and I've never really hid my cannabis usage from you we've never really it's never really right. been like oh my god your mom <laughs> it's like and I also don't flaunt it or do anything disrespectful but i yeah you're outside i mean i'm saying you're outside, outside nothing wrong with it during a pandemic like <laughs> back off lady <laughs> <laughs> no i'm just talking when you said you know odors or whatever it made me made me think of that yeah 
Well, it's an exciting time for cannabis. We're a few minutes, I think, away from it going going legal federally, uh, which will be interesting and fun and a, a whole different game. And uh, and I'm curious to see if the prices will go up or down or what. And I, a friend and I did the math once on what we what we must spend a year on cannabis, each of us, and we did the math and and it's not a little bit amount of money. It's not it's not nothing. I couldn't buy a Kia every year, but maybe like a used car once a year kind of thing, like a shitty car. Really? It depends. A- around around 3K. Around 2 to 3K depending on the year. Well, okay. I I don't know if I want to go here, but I, I know what the, the bill is from um, the liquor store <laughs> since we're in <laughs> Pandemicville. And... Um, yeah. Yeah. Are you saying my bill for the No. Because <laughs> I. No. Everybody. Yeah. Yeah. You know my my introduction to, introduction to healthy food macrobiotic was was not an introduction at all. I was raised. You were there. You remember. I uh, do remember. <laughs> I was raised. It was a long long time ago, but I do remember it. And it was far out stuff at, at the time for you know Northeast Philadelphia family for me to be coming into school in you know first grade with like crunchy granola or wheat germ. Or things that you know people get at Whole Foods and Trader Joe's and you know Amazon Prime now. We're totally like you hippies. And we used to go, have to go to the health food store to get it. Harry's, Larry's, Harry's. Harry's. It was Harry's. That's right on Cotman Avenue in Philadelphia. Big up Harry. And cookies and licorice, real licorice. And these, these fizzy sodas. That were like close to like a cream soda or black cherry wishniak, wish black cherry wishni wishniak. Yeah, maybe. But yeah, healthy healthy sodas. Did, were they sugar free? It must have been like carob Fruits? sugar, or fruit fruit flavors. Oh, yeah. carob instead of but there candy. Were, but there were glass, you know, glass bottles you'd crack open and have a fizziness to it. It'd be like. I'm having a soda. <laughs> it wasn't a soda. I don't soda. remember that. It's like watermelon and, and, and CO2. <laughs> when was the first time you tasted um, like a sugar soda? Um, a sugar soda. I think it probably would have been in elementary school at like a, a roller rink birthday party. And it was, a, yeah, it's all coming back to me now. I would have been like 10 years old, eight years old, nine years old, somewhere in there. And it was at Palace Roller Rink. Um, ber- everyone had their birthday parties there. Uh huh. And they'd do like boy skate and girl skate, and you'd, you'd slap your you slap hands. Everyone, no, no. <laughs> like imagine like all, only the girls are skating, so all the boys are like around You're the right. skate ring, and everyone just sort of high fives in their way That's around. It's really cute. Yeah, really cute. And then if like you got a high five, it meant they liked you, and if you didn't get a high five, it meant they did. No. <laughs> no, I don't remember. It's like being in elementary school and somebody forgets to bring a card with your name on it and everybody else got cards from that person. Forgets. Yeah. Like, like just like totally miscounted or something. Oh, right. Or whatever. You mean like Valentine's Day? Valentine's Day. Yeah. Well, we've been talking about like how some people their experience was everyone in the class gave everyone else a card. So there was like an event where everyone got six or 12 or 30 cards or f- 50 cards, depending on where you went to school. <laughs> and then there were other people whose experience was that you only gave cards to the people you wanted to be your Valentines. That apostrophe. Do they give out, I don't know if they give out cards. Well, now they're not giving out anything, but I don't know if generally people still give out cards. No, they send, they send, they send they TikToks text to, to each, each other. other. <laughs> they send, they do at each other at a TikTok and then they stitch it together if they like you. So I didn't think of this. I guess kids, when schools are in session, I guess children are not getting paper valentines anymore. We'll have to consult with someone who knows we'll this, have to but ask I, somebody. I feel like they probably weren't messing with that much anyway. I don't know why. It just feels like it's, yeah. Oh, that's gone too. Yeah, I think they got rid of that when kids stopped um, doing eye contact. Okay, that makes sense. Oh, and you would have to write it. Well, do they still write in school? My t- my best friend's a teacher, and he talks about how the kids do not know how to hold a pen. 
And that when there's certain things they have to do, like fill something out, they're like, my hand hurts. Oh, right. And if you hand them a game controller, their hands are right strong. But if it's like, do this, it's a disaster. Is everything done on a computer and sent to a printer? I don't even think there's printer that's sent to the teacher. It's all systems. And there was a TikTok, again, of these of this teacher speaking about how he gave his theater students a, a scene to do. Yeah. And in this scene, it was, a, it was a classroom setting. I think these were middle school or high schoolers. High schoolers. And in the scene, the characters, uh, a girl was passing a note to a girlfriend to get the note to a, a guy, and it got intercepted, and the teacher reads it, and it's a whole scene around that horror, which I've lived. I don't know if you've lived or been on the teacher end of and the teacher had to stop in his tracks because the kids had asked so many questions. Finally, one of them was just like, we don't understand the premise of this play. It made no sense to teenage kids that a piece of paper would have a message on it and be snuck to somebody else and opened and read, and then that person would know that message. Everybody of a certain age had an experience either them selves or saw in a class where somebody passed a note and the teacher grabbed it and they got into trouble for it. Yeah. It's all gone. And depending on what level of trouble <laughs> they got into and depending on how the teacher handled that quote unquote trouble would also determine the level and types of trauma that all of those children would have. I remember specifically girl writes message to boy, teacher intercepts it, uh, makes girl read the message out in the loud class? the entire class. I watched her read this. This is uh, seriously fifth, sixth or seventh grade, and we, I, I remember her reading her own words with tears just streaming down her face in front of the whole effing the class. The teacher shamed her. Yeah, that's the worst thing you can do to a person. I well, it's one of them. Other yeah. than you know hitting them. Mm -hmm. It reminds me of the time. I guess it was junior high when I raised my hand to go to the ladies room the girls room and the teacher said not now and i froze for a few minutes and then i got up and i left the room or is that your story <laughs> wait a minute this sounds like this might have been your story it was so the boys as, room as you're sa as you're saying that <laughs> it's sounding familiar isn't well, as it? <laughs> you're saying that i'm like either i heard that story way too young <laughs> and embodied it to a place of like who do you think you are to tell me yes or no about me going to use a bathroom? Get out of my way. How dare you? You'll be hearing from my lawyer type attitude. Or did that happen to me and I told you and you just changed, you just co-opted that story? Or, or my favorite third option, which is both, right? It happened to both of no, us? No, a third option always is, are they both true? Right? It's oh. like, hey, this thing happened. And you're like, oh, this thing happened. And there's a third option where, like, they both happened. Oh. And then there's the fourth option, which I'm really getting to know in my soul, which is neither happened. It's only four, only four choices for really any scenario. Neither happened? It's just like a sort of a life experience thing. Like, something happens. You're like, oh, I saw it this way. <laughs> and you're like, oh, well, you're right. No, actually, I'm right. No, you're right. And then I'm like, oh, that third option in my 20s, 30s. I'm like, oh, that third option of, like... Maybe you're both right. And then <laughs> and then now the new revelation is like, don't forget about the fourth option where neither happened and you're living in a simulation. <laughs> oh, that explains so much anyway. So it would have been Palace Roller Skating Rink where I had a fountain. I think I might have had Pepsi before I tried a Coca-Cola. And I, I didn't have, know if I should say the names. I was going to just say the names, and I purposely said sugar soda instead. Yeah, I don't. I don't remember. It might have been a fountain Pepsi because it was like Pizza Hut or Palace, which were both pretty regs, tier two, uh, quick service retail category places. <laughs> the yeah, but I I tried sugar for the first time at seven. That was the first time I ever tasted sugar, uh, and it was at. I came home from the story goes, I come home from school and I'm, my mom says, how was your day? And I'm like crying. <laughs> She's like, oh my gosh, what's wrong? And I was like, there was a birthday party. She's like, yeah, it sounds, sounds like fun. What happened? And there was cake. <laughs> and you were like, okay. It still sounds like everything's okay. And I said, and everyone had some cake and they had so much fun. Okay, get on with the problem. And I didn't have any cake. My mom says, why didn't you have any cake? And I was like, because we don't eat cake. <laughs> and you said, we don't not eat cake. You just need to and already do know what 
choices to make based on what's going like what you eat affects your body and so like if you want to have anything you can but just be aware of what's what and what sugar is and what's what's healthy what's not healthy and i was like choices eh? Hmm. <laughs> i got away with it for a long time though you didn't ha- have any sugar or any meat or any chemicals or any food coloring and i'm back at school in my mind it was the next day it could have been weeks i mean i was back at school the next day in my mind this next birthday party a uh, sequence part of the story happened, I don't know, let's say it was a couple of days or weeks later, and the teacher goes to skip me as she became um, <laughs> so easily trained to do. <laughs> I should mention. <laughs> I should mention. She's like, oh, this dude doesn't have sugar, which I guess is, is good, but like, <laughs> she, I just told her that. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, <laughs> anyway. Like she'll listen to a seven year old about that, but not about going I to a was bathroom or like say to you, being right or wrong. The or times <laughs> that you say that they don't listen to, to kids, and here's a perfect example of that's when somebody did. They don't, they don't want to have to get an EpiPen. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's less about like, oh, yeah. oh, a human being I respect, and more about like, how can I go home at two forty five today? <laughs> so I was like, not today, my good woman. I will take that cake, and it was a uh, uh, vanilla birthday like a yellow <laughs> sponge cake with a chocolate frosting and uh i i remember it vividly I remember the bite I remember the, the feeling i was like uh my first feeling after the like endorphins and adrenaline and all the other physiological things that happened started happening i was like my first and dominant feeling was like you all have been doing this <laughs> this whole time and no one told me about this. I felt like betrayed by like society and uh, I would never, ever, ever, ever do like a heroin type drug and have never. And so I don't really know and I don't want to mitigate any addicts experiences or problems, but I imagine that feeling was what heroin feels like. It was every everything in my entire system lighting up pinning to the red number 10 and just like a concentrated high i was high i was high well i'm sure because there's a sensor that sugar goes to the sensor in the body and it's it's like feed me feed me and then i uh yeah then i was then i was in sugar and i think it was another three or four years before red meat but yeah sugar soda I had a craving for a Diet Coke about a week ago, and I had one, and it was it was all right. <laughs> it was like <laughs> I had two sips, I hit the spot, and then it was kind of like you know. Hmm. But it was uh, it's once a year that I feel like a craving for. That's how I a am soda. with a hamburger. Yeah, I'll, I'm I'm happy to eat a hamburger. They're delicious, and I put all the yummy stuff on it. Once a year, it's enough. There's nothing wrong with hamburgers. I just I just tried to make a uh, a veggie burger, and it's it turned out with closer lentils. No, I did some, I used mushrooms and beans and... Um, oh, Joel said he had something, had some beans, was that it? <laughs> yeah, that's how he described it, some beans. <laughs> I was like, do you want to try something I just made from scratch? I slow, <laughs> slow cooked mushrooms for eight hours. I'm not into saying a it's exactly them. how he described it. He's I just like, remember beans. beans. <laughs> that's all I remembered. Yeah, it turned out uh, closer to a crab cake texture than like a burger texture, so I baked it. Instead of grilling it. I've been at crab cake for years. Last time I had crab cake, it was in Baltimore at the harbor. Nice. And it was loaded up with so much Old Bay and MSG that I had like a dizzy, like a real dizzy. Really? Like hot, like I'm sweating. I think. I'm like, is it th- hot in here? And people were like, nah, it's, it's definitely winter and freezing right now. I think I've been told oh, Old Bay doesn't use MSG anymore, but I'm not really. I it was mean, years ago. Yeah. This could have been I before that. I have any idea. Yeah. I haven't had I haven't had a crab cake in yeah I don't know I don't know when I have last it's like fried crab and mayonnaise I mean, it sounds if you're into those things it's good <laughs> but if you're not into those things it's like the two most unappetizing versions of those right it's like but mayonnaise yeah mayo's good I like the vegan mayo though yeah I don't miss real mayo at all I had to stop buying mayonnaise regular mayonnaise years ago fascinating. Because I put it on everything, you know, oh. cold pizza for breakfast, <laughs> yeah, with mayonnaise. Yeah, but you talk, that's like a Ninja Turtle move. You uh, you talk about, maybe, I don't know if you want me to disclose this, but you talk about desiring gaining weight. Like, you want to add pounds, oh, right? you can't do that. I no, can't do that? I listen to the podcast. No, but isn't mayo, like, people. the perfect way to do that? <laughs> yeah. uh, no, it's not really a healthy fat, I don't think. Oh. Well, actually, olive oil's better for that. 
Oh, why? Yeah. Oh, that's good. <laughs> I have to go. I have to go. Okay. <laughs> Actually, I don't have to go. All right. Well, I do have to go. Okay. It's so much fun doing this What's with you. What's for dinner? Um, I think I need to cook off more of these. I made my own mushroom soy sauce. So I had to use like an absurd amount of mushrooms, different kinds. I and saw then, it in the refrigerator. And I, then I treated the liquid. I reduced it. And it's a whole thing over there. So now I have all these mushrooms, which explains this veggie Mushroom burger. pizza? So maybe a mushroom pizza. Or maybe some sort of... Some, there will be mushrooms. <laughs> there uh, will be mushrooms. Which I was just reading about. Yeah. And had a sort of epiphany around the relationship of why mushrooms and flat. Next time I'll tell you about why mushrooms and flowers work so well <laughs> you together. You promised. Because they're <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. So we okay. could go to Kennett Square. That's where they sell. That's where they grow mushrooms. It's like the most well known. One of my like. Oh, I see. I thought you meant like a farmer's market because I'm I'm actively sad about not being going to go to a farmer's market right now. Well, of course. Kenneth Square mushrooms. I uh, will talk about that. It's no one wants to hear about that. No. Yeah, I don't know. Mushroom talk. <laughs> Cancel. <laughs> <laughs> one episode. Uh, I love you. I love you it's too. It's so good to see you. I will figure something out for dinner for everybody. Um, for anyone who's still listening to this, thank you so much for joining us. If they're still listening. <laughs> yeah. You, if you're oh, okay. after all those Bubba monsters. If you're listening right now, email me at ricksorkin <laughs> at gmail.com and we have a little something special for you. Uh, and in the meantime, uh, until. <laughs> uh, it's easier to have interesting <laughs> things to talk about when you can actually go somewhere and talk to people. And have experiences. No new experiences makes conversations hard. I think I got. I thought to, to, this morning I had intentioned to get up and go get in the car and go for a ride and get out of the car and walk around somewhere. It's ambitious. And then I didn't do it. I was like, well, I don't know. That's adorable. That's adorable. Thank you very much for listening. And uh, don't forget to call your mother. Doesn't it seem Wisniak? Wisni yeah, maybe. And the mother has a podcast. Oh, oh, oh. So I started a podcast with my mom. We wanted a theme song so you could sing along.